My name is Dylan. I work at CrowdStrike. I'm Dylan B on Gopher Slack, and that is me. That's not Princess Leia. I'm here today to talk about mocking. Not like that. That poor gopher hasn't done anything at all to deserve being heckled. So what are we talking about? Mocking is the practice of creating or generating an implementation of some piece of behavior that imitates the real one. As programmers, we use mocks as test doubles, you know, like in unit tests. The, the mocks satisfy the same interface as the real thing that they're taking the place of. So your code doesn't know or even care that it's using a mock. Using mocks can definitely shorten your feedback loop when you're testing. So it's a nice boost to development productivity. A lot of times, you can create a mock local to a test and configure it to emulate, emulate exactly what you're doing. No need to have a database or three up and running. No need to create and manage SQL scripts to stuff your data and tear it down or manage those scripts as your schema evolves. Wins all around. But you all probably already knew all of that. So where are we going with this? Well, the first thing, obviously, is to pick one mocking framework and set about making sure everyone else uses it, right? Of course not. There isn't just one way to mock. Some teams will use one of the mocking frameworks. Matt Ryer created one. Testify has one. Google created one that Uber forked. Others will decide to write their own mocks so they don't have to worry about external dependencies. Some psychos will even choose to not mock, but we'll just leave them to it. There it is. The reality is that any of these can be the right approach for your project, but none of them are the one true way for every project. Other teams will make their own choices, which brings us to the real nugget that I'm here to talk about. Over the next couple of slides, we'll talk about how exporting test mocks can actually create problems and what you can do about it. In order to export your mocks, you have to first define an interface. There has to be something for you to mock, right? The gotcha is that Go interfaces are really meant to be defined where the behavior is consumed and not by the services providing those behaviors. And those of you that were here last year or saw the recording of my talk on YouTube, know how I feel about exporting interfaces as abstractions. Exported mocks can lead to, it, lead to issues even when you're being careful. Say, for example, your company picked Golang mock because Google created it and they're the Go people. In the years since, you've built thousands of tests around its mocks. Then, almost exactly a year ago, the repo got archived on GitHub with a note saying, use Uber's fork instead. Team X promptly switches over. The next day, Team Y sees a bunch of their tests in CI fail because GitHub.com, Golang mock, mock controller, and Uber's mock controller are different types and can't be used interchangeably. Lather, rinse, repeat for the rest of your development work. This could have been a localized you problem, but exported mocks make it everyone's problem. So what can we do better? Firstly, just don't export your mocks, ever. It's been my experience that it creates as many problems as it solves. Even within a single repo, limit the scope of your mocks. Mock that's only needed in one package should be in a file in that package called thing underscore mock underscore test dot go. This guarantees it's only accessible to the test in that package, and the underscore mock gives us a nice visual indicator of what it contains. For trivial handwritten mocks that are only used in one set of tests, just put them directly in the underscore test.go file. You don't even need a second file. Of course, it's wasteful to create the same mocks in multiple packages. For that case, create yourself an internal mocks package and put all the shared mocks there. Internal limits of visibility, and again, mocks gives us that visual indicator. Then, in all your tests that import a mocks package, Make sure it points to that mocks package so there's no confusion about which mocks are being used. Are we good? Yes. For those of you that, like me, prefer to generate mocks, make sure to install your code generators into a non-global place. GoPath and GoBin are machine-level settings 
And the whole point of this little rant is to convince everyone to keep things localized. Secondly, be explicit. No one wants to walk into a project and have to start hunting down past contributors and figure out what commands were used, to create some mock that hasn't changed in source control since 2018. For simple things, GoGenerate is available out of the box, and it's great for single self-contained commands. For more complex things, use whichever build system you like or your team is settled on and define a generate target. Whatever you do, make sure that it's easy for all engineers to find and use. In summary, mocks can be quite useful in tests, whether you generate them or write them by hand. Things change over time, and not everyone will agree, not everyone will agree with you on how or even whether to mock. Don't force your choices on everyone else. To that end, use the features of Go to make sure that your testing and mocking choices only affect your project. If you use code generation, make sure to do it in a way that doesn't affect any global state and make sure it's easy for everyone to do. And lastly, don't actually point and laugh at your coworkers. It's not very nice and probably will land you in an uncomfortable meeting with your manager and someone from HR.